We're at Max Performance today where the team's putting together this FPV F6 ute for the guys at XR6 Turbo Developments and they're calling it Tens in 10 Days. So the story is, the owner Ben was sending an earlier model Falcon Ute to the States for Drag Week, but it's not going to be ready in time. So he rang the guys at XR6 Turbo Developments and asked them what they recommended they'd use if they are going to send a Ute to the States. And they said, I, we'd start with an F6. So he rings them back and says, well, I bought an F6, you've got 10 days to get this thing ready to go in a container to Drag Week in the US. So that's what they're doing right now. They've got Zane and the guys from Max Performance putting this thing together for them. XR6 Turbo Developments has got all the parts together, so we've got parts laying around everywhere. The boys have just started pulling this thing apart, but they had it on the dyno earlier to see what it would make stock. Let's check that out. So 228 rear wheel kilowatts isn't as impressive as it should be. The boys suspect it's actually got a bit of a boost leak, but rather than try and chase it, they're just going to hook in because they're going to pull all this stuff apart anyway. So they've already started with the intercooler from XR6 Turbo Developments. That's in there already. They're pulling the engine and gearbox out. And you may say, why pull out the engine and gearbox? Well, the gearbox is getting replaced anyway with a fully prepped ZF box, right? Brand new converter, all the gear. And well, the engine needs pump gears, valve springs, all that stuff to make it super reliable in the US. And to make sure it goes back together properly, it's best to pull the engine box out, or at least the engine anyway, because if you, you know, if you know anything about barrows and the way the sump seals, well, if you don't get it right, it's going to piss oil everywhere. Best to do it right the first time. And that's what the boys reckon. So they're pulling the engine and box out. They've almost got that done. So they're going to stick with the Brembo's on the front, but up the back, it did have big brakes and the boys have put a, uh, NA brakes on it because they want to fit a 15 inch wheel on this thing. So they've already done that. They've actually already replaced the diff centre, would you believe? It's already got a uh, true track in there and 273, they've dumped the factory LSD, got a true track in there, 273 gears as factory and they've also replaced the yoke. Now normally these things would run a CVs type arrangement but they do have a habit of breaking so they put a proper yoke on there and they've got a big shaft over there on the floor to go in this thing. You may even notice they've actually welded the axle tubes to the centre as well right because these things have a habit of uh, spinning the axle tubes in the centre so they've replaced that and there's a few other goodies to go in this rear end as well but uh, we'll see them as they go. So this thing's going to make some snots, getting a thousand cc injectors. Boys are looking for about 480, 500 rear wheel kilowatts. That'll make it run tens easily. <laughs> Hey guys, it's day two down here at Max Performance where we are with the Tens in 10 Days project. Probably should stop calling it Tens in 10 Days considering the car arrived here yesterday and they've got about four days to do it now. So Scotty and I left here around six o'clock last night where the boys have just got the transmission out, ready to replace it with the new built ZF six speed. And since then they've also removed the engine, they've done the valve springs, they've done the head studs, they've basically removed the whole front of the engine, ready to replace it with the new timing chain, oil pump gears, all that good stuff. So basically the job for today is replace the turbo, reassemble the front of the engine, get the injectors in there, 
get some tough mounts on this engine and then back in the car later tonight. We've also got to do the fuel system. So if we come over here, you can see the search tank is already in the car. Basically, this is a bolt-in unit. It's got two Warbro 460s in it and basically bolts up to the factory fuel lines and all it needs is a, a power source. They already come in the tank. And if we go all the way back around, here we have the original fuel tank out of the car. Basically, the job is remove this assembly, replace the factory fuel pump with another Warbro 460, and then put that back in the car and the fuel system's pretty much done. We just retain all the factory lines, everything bolts up really nicely. So it's a pretty quick and easy job. So that's our new fuel rig. Uh, factory rig here goes out, put a blank in. Yeah, if I can play again. So. So pulled the cams out of it last night and um, yeah, noticed that it's basically pitted, falling apart. A few of the other ones are starting to do the same thing. Pretty common with FGs, they will do it with high case. Um, yeah, time for some new ones. So this is what can happen to a factory barra oil pump gear if you're on the limiter too much or you're revving it too hard, they shudder. So because we want this car to be ultra reliable over in America, we're going with a harder oil pump gear. So this is going to not break under high RPM or high load. We're also using a billet backing plate because these gears rub up against it and this is going to take a lot longer to wear out and cop a lot more punishment. So guys, this is the valve body from a ZF6 speed, and as you can see, it's pretty complicated, a lot of solenoids and stuff, but there's actually a computer there as well. That's what the computer looks like out of a ZF6 speed, all right? Now, the funny thing is, that computer has to stay with the car. You cannot transfer the computers from car to car. The computer has to stay with the car. Ford can't even reprogram them. They have to stay with the car. So you can swap the boxes over, but the computer has to stay in. So the boys are gonna, Pull this apart, it's got to get like shift kit plate and all that sort of stuff, recalibrated. But the computer will have to stay with the car in terms of that will have to go into the new box. So when they put it in the car, it will all talk to each other. Otherwise, if you try and throw any old box in there, it's not going to work. So we are back at Max Performance today with the F6 Ute. So the boys at Max Performance have put all the parts on from speed parts. So intercooler, valve springs, head studs, turbo, piping, intake. There's all sorts of stuff going in there. Transmission as well. So it is ready. Zane's just runner up on the dynamics. It's made 512 kilowatts at the tyres but Zane reckons they're going to turn it down just a little bit to about the 480 mark, just for safety and because it's going to the States. So 
And as part of that, the boys are going to do some testing. So we're going to leave Melbourne tonight. Actually, we're going to take Turbo Taxi up as well. So we're going to take the F6 and Turbo Taxi, drive them to Sydney and race them at Sydney Dragway tomorrow night. So that's going to be a good test for this car. E85, so they'll have to take a few drums. We've got some on the floor right there. Drive it up to Sydney, give this thing a proper test before it goes in the container for Drag Week US. And we'll be there as well to follow it along. Let's get on the road and see what this thing does in Sydney. Bit of E85 life here. This will be 60 litres, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, 60 litres. Oh, wow. Liters. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, we're at Maroolan on our way up to Sydney to race Turbo Taxi and the Ute. The boys have already used up all their E85, so they've just banged a bit of uh, 98 in it, and they're going to uh, do a slight tickle on the tune until we get back to E85 land. And then uh, tonight, it's all on. So it's been a massive day here at Sydney Dragway. It's been a massive day all up because the boys have just driven this ute up from Melbourne. Over 800 k's, E85, they had to carry a few jerry cans. But uh, the boys, it's gone 1060 straight off the bat. Yeah, you, no, you happy pretty with good. that? Yeah, no, it was good. Pretty much um, filled her up, run it out, 1060, soft launch as well. And then from that, we ended up pulling some power out of it and then it ran 10.56. 10.56, that's yeah, not too so, bad. Yeah, with less power. So, so you pulled some power out of it. Yeah, yeah, so um, the tyre, it's ran two five five tyre on there. Yeah. So um, we just took some out. Car's nearly two tonnes, so it's probably too too much weight for per tyre. <laughs> and it's got a bit of power too. It had yeah, yeah. 517 so, rear wheel kilowatts, so obviously it's yeah. probably turned down probably we 460-ish. 460 yeah, yeah so, 460 they reckon. There yeah, you go. Yeah, so 1056 on 460. Any plans to put a bigger tyre on it before it goes? Yeah, possibly, yeah. <laughs> it, could, it could be... I yell on the cards, we're just going to let the owner know before it goes for a drag week. And Ben's taking it tonight? Yeah, so he's taking it tonight, it's going to Brisbane, um, might be getting a rear end in it, we don't know yet. Yeah. Just depends how he, he finds the times that we run. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so... I mean, right. he's got to be pretty stoked with that, like yeah. it's been about, what, six day turnaround? Yeah, it's, thereabouts. yeah, six days from drop the car off. We had to wait for the car to be dropped off and then six days from there and then it rolled off the dyno, drove here. So full That on. is amazing. Yeah, 900 k's. <laughs> Mid-10s, totally drivable, ready for drag week. That's it, straight onto it. All right, we'll see these boys in action in the US. <laughs> 